Well, good morning and welcome to this Trinity Sunday, this first Sunday after Pentecost here on June the 7th. Our opening hymn this morning is hymn 362, verses 1, 2, and 4. 362, Holy, Holy, Holy. Where is Bill? continues on page 355, page 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together our prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to you to all hearts, hearts are open. open. All desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Gloria is found in our hymn, hymnal hymn 411, verses 1, and we're going to do it two times.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given to us your servant's grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory. O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The reading for today is a reading from Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was good. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on the earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, trees of every kind bearing fruit with a seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, let there be light in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs, for seasons, for, for days and for years and let, the be, let, there be, let them be lights in the dome to the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness and God saw it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind, with which the waters swarmed, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals on the earth of every kind and it was so god made the wild animals of the earth of every kind 
and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our own image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the seas, and over the birds of the air, over the cattle, and over the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of the earth, and every tree with the seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast on the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the multitude, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it, God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today we'll be reading Canticle 13, found on the Book of Common Prayer, page 90. And we will repeat this in unison. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple. On, on the, the throne, throne of, of your, your majesty, majesty, glory to you. Glory to you, seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you, beholding the depths. In the high vault of heaven, glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. The second reading is a reading from the second letter to the Corinthians from Paul. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Grant one another with a holy, greet one another with a holy kiss. And all the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of all the Holy Spirit will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel hymn is hymn uh, 405, I believe, All Things Bright and Beautiful. It's absolutely one of my favorites. We're going to do verse uh, 1 before the gospel and verse 4 after the gospel.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. So quiet the noise of our lives that we can hear your voice in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. In the life of every person, there is a tendency to look to something greater than ourselves. For Christians and for Muslims and for Jews, that is God. I love how in AA, they talk about in the steps to look to a higher power, something greater than ourselves that can help us when life has become unmanageable. For some, that higher thing, that greater thing is science. Science is the greatest thing. For others, it might be material or even pleasure. We have so many choices, it gets really difficult to pick just one. Well, to worship something is to give it worth, right? It is an act of devotion. We assess value to an object or to a person or to a deity, and we do it all the time. It isn't like it's something that's strange to us. We start even at a very young age, and we do it all the way through adulthood, and we have sports that we adore or athletes or politicians or actors, writers. We all have our favorites, those things that we value and adore. But I love a, a, a Roman Catholic priest, his name is Richard Rohr, and he wrote a book, Breathing Underwater, which is about uh, spirituality and the 12 steps. And this is what he says in our, our desire to worship. He says, Christians are usually sincere and well-intentioned people until you get to any real issues of ego, control, power, money, pleasure, and security. Then they tend to be pretty much like everybody else. You're often given some bogus version of the gospel, some fast food religion, without any deep transformation of the self. And the result has been the spiritual disaster of Christian countries that tend to be as consumer-oriented proud, warlike, racist, class-conscious, and addictive as everybody else, and often more so, he says, I'm afraid. And that's what happens when we worship. Well, today is Trinity Sunday, and part of the whole point of Trinity Sunday is who is it and what is it that we worship? 
And today is to help us understand that we worship a Godhead, right? We worship this Trinity, and we believe that the Trinity is of one substance that comes from our, our Nicene Creed, and it goes back to our monotheistic roots. There has to only be one God. But there are three persons, and that is the different ways in which we experience God. It is a theological construct trying to describe who it is that we worship. One of the interesting things I found out as a young man is that the word Trinity is absolutely never mentioned in the scriptures. It's found there, not as the word Trinity, but in its existence, but not mentioned. In fact, even our creeds, which we usually do on Sunday, the Nicene Creed, on occasion like we did last Sunday with no baptisms, We'll do the Apostles' Creed, and then there's a third one. Anybody know the third creed? Anybody in here? There's bonus points in heaven if you know it. It's the Athanasian Creed. And it is found in our prayer book. Anyway, it's not called the Trinity there either. But in every one of them, it refers to three persons being one. Well, today's lessons give us clear examples of the references to God being really of this one substance, but being experienced in three persons. That first reading, which is a long and beautiful description of creation in Genesis, gives us a clear understanding of God the Father, who is the creator of the whole earth. But even in the midst of it, the Spirit is hovering over the waters, and it says, let us make humankind in our image. It doesn't say mine, it says our. Second Corinthians, in which Paul is calling the people to live at peace, there is this calling that is great and beautiful, especially for our time, which is calling for unity and forgiveness and bearing one another's burdens. It's a beautiful call in the midst of the life and the, con the, the, the situation of our world. And at the end of it, there is this Trinitarian blessing. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, so there's one, the love of God and the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And the truth, we need that blessing in the midst of all that we're going through. Well, the Gospel of Matthew today lays out a great theological foundation to our worship as God as Trinity. For in the beginning, it says that they, when they saw him, that being Jesus, it said a new and interesting thing. It said they worshiped him. Now, these people have known Jesus, right, for many years as a person. They've called him teacher and rabbi. Even some of them called him uh, the Messiah, and they followed his teachings. But now, post-resurrection, for the first time in Scripture, it says this. They worshipped him. They set him high above everything else. And it really is an incredibly important transformation that occurred in their relationship with Jesus for they are Jews, they're not Christians at this point, they are Jews, and as Jews and observant Jews, they would never worship another person. So it is saying here that the resurrection appearances have altered their understanding of who Jesus is in the Trinity, right? Jesus is now on par with God. Jesus is God, the true Son of God. But only, and this is what it takes many, many years, 325, we finally get some sense of all this. It is one God, monotheism, in three persons. Well, as they worship Jesus, he says to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Right? So he says, I am Lord of all. And this is the central message of the good news of Jesus Christ. And the foundation of our Christian mission, which we are all called to share. We are all called under this authority to go and to teach the world of God's love for all people as found in Jesus and to obey what God has called us to do in these teachings and to love and to worship God and God alone. Then there is given this great promise. I love this. Jesus says, I am with you always to the very end of of the age. It's interesting, this is one of the last things he says, but in Matthew 1, verse 23, it says this, and so it's sort of these bookends. It says, Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, 
And they shall name him, and you all know it, Emmanuel, which means God is with us. And this is continued in the gift we celebrated last week in Pentecost in that we have the Holy Spirit with us always. So now, even though this is what we believe about God, Jesus and the Holy Spirit, the question for all of us still remains. Who or what gets the majority of our devotion? Where do we set things in priority and what is getting the greatest sense of our worship in this life? It's always interesting. You can always do an evaluation of our time, our talent, and our treasure, and the answer is always made clear of what is the greatest value in our lives. And this is what today is being said by Jesus in this great commission. Until it is God, until it is three persons in one substance, we are missing out on the fullness of life that can only be given to us by the Trinity. Amen. We continue with the words found in faith in the Nicene Creed. It's found on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us say this together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our prayers of the people is form four, found on page 388 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give us all the reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use it, its resources rightly in the service of others and to do your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loved us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We commend to you your mercy, all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Just encourage you this day to join me in lifting up the, uh, the reality of our country and perhaps um, there will be a really a united uh, move to stop those things that are uh, that we do that show prejudice against one another. So I invite you to uh, lift up the movement today that the hearts of people uh, might be changed. Lord, we just lift up all those this day who are oppressed, who have been uh, shown prejudice against, and those who are standing up for them. We know, Lord, that in the midst of all of the difficulty as human beings, that uh, it is that which we do against one another that is as great a sin as that which we do against you. For you ask us to love you and to love our neighbor. We also know that that love is acts of service. It's not how we feel. It is what we say and what we do. And so, Lord, as we called this week, and I did in, in the, both the E! News and in, on the Facebook, I just encourage each of us to lift up our hearts to you, to discern those places where we are not completely right with one another, knowing that you are the one who can truly change our hearts and our minds and bring peace to all the people upon this earth. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And continuing on page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor that we may experience God's infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. I invite you to greet one another. And if there isn't someone right next to you to greet, then I encourage you call, text, email, do something this week that reaches out to them that shares the love of Jesus Christ with those who are our friends and neighbors who um, are missing one another in this time. I do, uh, Ian, if you're able, I'd like to invite you to come down here and join me. So if you are a guest uh, with us here on uh, Facebook Live, we do welcome you this day and pray that you will um, uh, let us know that you are new to the community or new to St. John's by going and visiting our website, stjohnsnb.com, and just hitting the contact button and emailing us to let us know so that we can reach out to you and welcome you to this community. One of the things that happened is uh, Ian 
uh, Flores, who's been with us for many years doing music and helping us technic technically, uh, just graduated from Texas State. And so uh, I wanted to uh, congratulate him and I wanted you all to do the same. But then I wanted to say a prayer over him and a blessing for him. So I'm going to invite him to come next to me. I'll put on my mask so we're all safe. So, all right. Ian's been a great minister for us. And so we give thanks for you, Ian, for all your ministry. And then we're going to pray for you this day. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks for Ian and his commitment to you and his worship of you and the way he does so, so faithfully in music and song and praise. We uh, thank you for his completion of his degree and graduation. We pray, Lord, that you continue to lead him and guide him, continue to bless him, continue to take him to places that are of great fulfillment to him and to this world where his greatest joy and the world's greatest need meet that he might make a, an incredible difference in the lives of the people of this community and beyond. Just thank you, Lord, for all his gifts, the way he so faithfully shares them, and pray, Lord, you gift him even more in this, this work that he has studied, that he may serve you and glorify you in all he does. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Congratulations. All right. Just a couple other things just to uh, note. It was in the e-news and, and you saw it on the website or Facebook that we are moving towards reopening, but uh, there are uh, modified pieces and phases to this. I got some notes saying, I hear you're opening this weekend, uh, which was not true. Um, it was just the, the regulations that are going out. And one of the number one things that you must be aware of is that the number one criteria is the number of COVID-19 cases in and around our area because uh, we pull from San Antonio and from Spring Branch and Canyon Lake and San Marcos, Seguin and New Braunfels. So all of those people are coming together from these different communities to worship our Lord. And so we have to be aware of that. And so there has to be 14 days of decreasing cases. And I think this week I saw one day of three or seven and another three or four just on uh, Thursday or Friday of this week. So that's not decreasing, by the way, that's increasing, and it's got to be 14 days decreasing. So that gives you some sense of when we can open. And that's not uh, anything that the people of St. John's developed. Again, that was developed by the diocese in an effort to make sure that when we do develop, the one thing that we don't want to happen is someone come here, get sick, uh, something worse than getting sick, perhaps die because of church. And so we are really trying to be careful in that area. Just a reminder today as well, uh, Adrian Quintanilla is uh, doing a new book and a new study on focusing on God's will. That will be on Zoom at 10 o'clock. No book is needed, but you have to go to the e-news to click on the link for that Zoom class. And I pray that you will join that as well. And then both the men and the women's Bible studies. And again, you can find this on the e-news are on Zoom now. And so I encourage you to do that. Also, just a reminder, Camp Outreach begins... Uh, tomorrow, June 8th. And so uh, if you or your students want to be a part of that, I think you can still register perhaps today. And there's a lot to do today. In fact, there's a drive-by um, to pick the, the uh, materials up for this first week. It says the drive-by time will be from 1130 to 130 outside the children's gathering place. So Cheryl will be down there uh, to do that. So uh, please note that today. And then uh, Emma wanted to say thank you for all those who contributed to the seniors tribute and to those who came for the drive by. Uh, that was a great blessing and treasure. It's a lot of fun. It's always more fun doing those drive bys than sometimes we might think. So if you're ever invited to do one, go because when you're standing there and these people come all the way to see you, it really is uplifting to you. So well, let us pray for birthdays and anniversaries. Let me grab my prayer book. If you are celebrating, I invite you uh, to pray with me. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up when they fall. And in their heart, may your peace, which passes all understanding, abide all the days of their lives through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And if you're celebrating an anniversary, I invite you to join hands with your spouse. 
Grant, O God, in your compassion, this couple having taken each other in marriage and affirming again the covenant which they have made may continue to grow in forgiveness, loyalty, and love and come at last to the eternal joys which you have promised through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Again, I, I uh, just want to do before our final um, offertory sentence, uh, thanks to Mackenzie and Hayden who came and showed up here for about two months to do the readings and did so faithfully. I've invited uh, the um, lay readers to come, and so Don Greer is here today and doing that, and so we give thanks for those lay readers and all these that are here, Tish and, and Bill and Ian that in the altar guild today, Karen Shumway is here to help us make sure that we are able to worship together. Well, as Jesus said, let us walk in love as Christ loves us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. And may we offer ourselves as well as an offering and sacrifice to God for the well-being of the whole world. to praise God from whom all blessings flow by offering up 
to God of time, a, a, a share of our time, our talent as our treasure as we continue to worship God and to give thanks for all the blessings that we have been given by singing the doxology. Thanksgiving this month we'll be doing Eucharistic Prayer B found on page 367 page 367 the Lord be with you and also with you lift up your hearts we lift them to the Lord let us give thanks to the Lord our God it is right to give God thanks and praise it is right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the fulfillment of his true promise, the Holy Spirit came down from heaven, lighting upon the disciples to teach them and to lead them into all truth, uniting peoples of many tongues in the confession of one faith, and giving to your church the power to serve you as a royal priesthood and to preach the gospel to all nations. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever say this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation. In the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this one, we pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country wherewith St. John and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, 
we are bold to pray. We're going to do so again in Spanish. Padre Nuestro, que estás en el cielo, santificado sea tu nombre, venga tu reino, hágase tu voluntad, en la tierra como en el cielo. Danos hoy nuestro pan de cada día. Perdona nuestras ofensas, como también nosotros perdonan, per, perdonamos a los que nos ofenden. No nos dejes caer en tentación y libranos del mal, porque tuyo es el reino, tuyo es el poder, y tuya es la gloria, ahora y por siempre. Amén. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for us, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And as we are doing this live, and we have a very uh, technical way of, of praying this active reception prayer, Don is going to hold up the prayer in front of the camera. And I invite you to pray this prayer with me. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. And since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me, in this life and in the life to come. Amen.
Thanksgiving is found on page 366. Let us pray, saying together, Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And may God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon you this day and remain with you and keep you strong now and always. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn 368. Holy Father, great creator, we'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4. especially that last stanza in the midst of the world that we are living in for every tongue and race combined in the mercies of Christ divine, right? So the blessing, we give thanks for that blessing in our lives and pray that that lives out each and every day. Alleluia, alleluia, let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.
not because they're not uh, what I want to do, but because until there's a level of peace in our country, I just don't feel uh, the call to do that. Instead, I feel called to ask us to pray and do, do like I said in the E! News and in my post this week to confess. Um, I had different people say different things. Why didn't I say this or why didn't I say that? And really, all I can tell you is that until uh, my heart is changed, and I would say the same for you all, not much is going to change in this world, and it is God who does that changing. So I encourage you, there's nothing, no guilt that I feel, like uh, someone said a uh, white guilt or something like that. That's not the guilt that I feel. What I guilt that I feel is being guilty of doing things against my neighbor, which is the greatest commandment. It's nothing more, nothing less, that's it. And until those things change in me and all those around me, our world is going to live in chaos. So I encourage you, be prayerful about that in yourself. Do less pointing the finger out there and point it right here and let God change you. I pray you guys have a great week and a great celebration of all God's blessings. And I pray God does great things in this world. It needs it. Love you guys. See you next week.